The inverse function rule allows us to compute the derivative of the inverse function of a known function in terms of the derivative of the known function. The picture here illustrates that situation. The blue curve is the graph of a function, the red curve is the graph of its inverse function. It is obtained by reflecting the blue curve in the line y equals x. The formal definition of inverse functions is the following. Let f from a to b be a function if there is a function g from b to a such that f composed with g is the identity on b and g composed with f the identity on a, then the function f is called invertible and the function g is the inverse function of the function f. So this is how inverse functions are defined quite generally. Mathematically, that can be expressed using the mathematical notations for, for all. So we say that the function g is the inverse function of f if uh, for all b in b, f at g b is b, and for all a in a, g at f a is a. Notation for the inverse function is f and then superscript minus 1. This is the inverse function of the function f. So we have for the inverse function for all b, f and f inverse at b is b, and for all a in a, f inverse at f a is a. Now one should pay attention to this notation. The inverse function of f evaluated at x is not the same as f of x to the power negative 1. So f and then superscript minus 1 denotes the inverse function. f minus 1 at x is the value of the inverse function at x. f of x to the power negative 1 is the inverse of the value fx of the function f. The inverse function of a continuous function need not necessarily be continuous. Likewise, the inverse function of a differentiable function is not necessarily differentiable. For example, x cubed is a, a differentiable function. Its inverse function is cube root of x, and this is not differentiable at x equals 0. So the inverse function of an invertible differentiable function needs not be differentiable. In the following considerations, we assume, without mentioning it specifically, that all the functions un under consideration are differentiable and have differentiable inverses. So how to find the inverse function? To find the inverse function of a function f from a to b, one can start with the equation y equals f of x and solve x in terms of y from that equation. If solving is possible and the solution is unique, then the function f has an inverse function and the solution defines the inverse function. For an example, to find the inverse function of the function y equals 2 times x plus 1, solve x in terms of y. Solving is easy, and one gets immediately that x equals y minus 1 divided by 2, that is x equals 1 half y minus 1 half. This expression defines the inverse function. It is customary to exchange the roles of x and y to get that the inverse function of this function y equals 2 times x plus 1 is y equals 1 half x minus 1 half. Graphs of inverse functions. Consider the following example. The function y equals 16 times x to the fourth has the inverse function y equals fourth root of x divided by 2, assuming that the domain of the definition of y equals 16 times x to the fourth is the non-negative real axis. If you restrict x to the non-negative real axis, then from the equation y equals 16 times x to the fourth, one can solve x 
in terms of y uniquely, and that solution yields the expression for the inverse function. Without the restriction, we get two solutions, namely plus or minus fourth root of y divided by 2, and therefore the inverse function is not defined unless we restrict the domain of definition of 16 times x to the fourth to the non-negative real axis. The function 16 times x to the fourth, its graph looks like a parabola, kind of a fourth degree parabola opening up. The graph of uh, the function y equals fourth root of x divided by 2 is the red curve. The red curve is symmetric with respect to the blue curve, blue curve reflected in the line y equals x yields the red curve. This is generally always so. Here the blue curve is the graph of a function that has an inverse function. The graph of the inverse function is obtained by reflecting the graph of the function in the line y equals x. Now, how do we do that? We draw the line y equals x, and then we reflect everything with respect to this line. That is, we change the roles of x and y. When we do that, we get the red curve, and the red curve is the graph of the inverse function. So, the blue curve is the graph of y equals f of x, and the red curve is the graph of y equals the inverse of f at x. Consider the line tangent to the graph of the function f at the point x0, y0. This is the blue line shown in the picture. The red line tangent to the graph of the inverse function at y0, x0 is a reflection in the line y equals x of the blue line tangent to the graph of f at x0, y0. So when we form the inverse function of a function, we simply exchange the roles of x and y. Let us take a closer look at this picture. Let alpha and beta be the acute angles in which the red and the blue tangent lines intersect the x-axis. So, so the angle beta is, gives the slope of the blue line, the angle alpha gives the slope of the red line. And we may take an even more close look at this. So here we have only the two lines indicated, and then there's a right angle triangle shaded red. Angle beta is the angle that the blue line makes with the x-axis and angle alpha is the acute angle that the red line makes with the x-axis. Zoom in a little bit further. So here we have the angles alpha and beta. The red line has been obtained by reflecting the blue line in the line y equals x. This means that since the blue line intersects x-axis in angle beta, the red line intersects y-axis in the same angle. So we conclude by, by the, the construction that we have down here also angle beta. So by symmetry, this means that alpha and beta are the acute angles of the red right angle triangle in the fourth quadrant. And this means that alpha plus beta must be pi over 2 because they are the acute angles of a right angle triangle. By considering the right angle triangle formed by the coordinate axis and the red line, we have concluded that alpha plus beta is pi over 2. Derivative of the inverse function f, f at y0 is by the definition tangent of alpha, that is the slope of the red line. This is just the definition of the derivative. It gives the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function. Likewise, 
derivative of f at x0 is tangent of beta, the slope of the blue line. We have that alpha plus beta is pi over 2, that is tangent of alpha is tangent of pi over 2 minus beta. But tangent of pi over 2 minus beta is sine pi over 2 minus beta divided by cosine pi over 2 minus beta. But sine pi over 2 minus beta is cosine beta. And cosine pi over 2 minus beta is sine beta. Therefore tangent pi over 2 minus beta is cosine beta divided by sine of beta. This is 1 divided by tangent of beta. And this means that tangent of alpha times tangent of beta is 1. And this is really the inverse function rule. Derivative of f evaluated at x0 times derivative of the inverse function at y0 is 1. By geometry we have now shown that the derivative of f at x times the derivative of the inverse function at y equals 1. And this followed by considering the right angle triangle shaded red here formed by the red tangent line and the coordinate axis. The inverse function rule can also be proved by the chain rule easily. We start by the defining equation, the inverse function of f evaluated at f of x equals x. Now these two functions are the same. The composed function f inverse composed with f and the identity function x. So if the two functions are the same, then their derivatives are also the same. So we differentiate both sides. The derivative of x is 1. So we get that the derivative of the inverse function of f composed with f is always 1. But the derivative of the composed function f inverse composed with f can be computed by the chain rule. It is the derivative of the inverse function evaluated at f of x times f prime at x. So this equals 1 and this is the inverse function rule. So this proof by the chain rule is quick and easy but um, we miss the geometric intuition that relates us the inverse function rule to slopes of certain tangent lines. As an example of the use of the inverse function rule, consider the function natural logarithm of x. This function, which I now call g, is the inverse function of the exponential function. So the solution is that g is the inverse function of the function y equals f of x equals e to the power x. The derivative of the exponential function is the exponential function itself. Therefore, we get f prime at x equals e to the power x. And then we can use the inverse function rule that tells us that g prime at y is 1 over f prime at x, which is now 1 over e to the power x, which equals 1 over y. It is customary to replace y with x to get the formula derivative of ln of x is just 1 over x. So this is the, the differentiation formula for the natural logarithm. To summarize, we have obtained, by considering the red right angle triangle bounded by the red tangent line and the coordinate axis, we have obtained the inverse function rule. The derivative of a f function at x times derivative of the inverse function at the corresponding point y is 1. Very useful rule.